Okay. Thank you very much for coming. I will, my name is Pedro Duenas. I will introduce you the DSO, TSO coordination, the master thesis that I have developed within the Master in Electric Power Systems at this <coughs> university, ITK University, and with the collaboration of Union Fenosa Distribution, the company where I have been doing the internship during the last five months at uh, Active, Active Network Department within the Technical Regulation Unit. First of all, I will give you some documentation so you can have not the slides, but just the most important issues that we are going to address during this presentation. So, here you can have also the master thesis. At the end of this presentation, I will be happy to answer any question from your side. So, first of all, what we are going to see today, thesis motivation, thesis objectives, we will develop them. Later on, we will see the conclusions and finally future steps. So, why we are today here? And there are new distributed energy resources uh, that that are bringing new problems such as new connections, uncertainty in generation, complex by directional flows. But they can also bring new solutions for the system operation for the system operators in form of services. On the other side, there are uh, improvements of information and communication technologies that I will refer as ICT for the rest of the presentation, that are bringing new solutions for the monitoring problem for to, in order to monitor better the lower voltages of the grid. So let's focus a little bit this presentation. Why we are today here, we are we already seen it because of DER, distributed energy resources and ICT improvements. Who is going to be assessed, both DSO and TSO, what is going to be assessed, the roles, what are the roles, the functions, the positions that they have, where is going to be assessed in the European electric system, and when is going to be uh, addressed this problem for the present, for the current situation, and for the future. So let's see which are the thesis objectives of, of today. First of all, there are five uh, objectives. The first one and the second are, are the analysis of the present and future DSO and TSO roles in Europe. Later on, we will analyze if there is any overlap area that will need the coordination. Later, we will propose a methodology in order to address this problem of coordination uh, issue among both DSO and TSO. And finally, we will apply this theoretical uh, methodology into a practical case study. So, let's go for the first two present and future European TSO and DSO roles. We have to say that in this master thesis we have considered an innovative approach. We have usually said that the role of TSO is the security of supply, while the role of the DSO is usually quality of, quality of service, ensure a quality of service. However, here we have considered that those roles do not depend on the system operator, they depend on the voltage level that they are owning. For example, this blue line represents the case of Spain, and if we move down, it, we will have the case of France. We can say that the, we compare both cases, both countries, we can say that TSO in France will have a higher uh, security, uh, quality of service since they are owning lower voltages of the grid. In the case of the Spanish DSOs, they will have higher security of supply since uh, they are owning higher voltages in the grid. Once we have considered this, we can go directly for the different roles of both DSO and TSO today. And we have identified that there are three main roles, quality of service, security of supply, and market facilitation, and are the same for both DSO and TSO. The difference appear when we analyze the control variables that they have and the tools that they have in order to achieve uh, those control variables. For example, in the case of the DSOs for the quality of, quality of service and security of supply, and uh, DSO is uh, have a, as, a, as a tools, as operation, the maintenance and the, and the grid planning in order to achieve the control variables in order to accomplish with those roles. If we compare this with the TSO, we see that they have also uh, grid planning and maintenance, 
as a base for the quality of supply and security of service, uh, as a quality of service and security of supply, and also they have uh, the use of uh, the TSO have the use of operational market services for the quality of service, or for example the use of exchange border for the security of supply. If we add this current situation with the new improvements in information and communication technologies and the distributed energy resources, we can draw what will be the future roles of both TSO and TSO. <coughs> and we can see that roles will remain, will be the same as are today, and also the control variables that they will have. The differences appear when we look at the tools and operations that both TSO and TSO are having. We can see that tools are the same as today and also it may appear new tools that we can see in the slide in red for both TSO and TSO. For this reason we need to establish a coordination because both TSO and TSO, both system operators will be willing to act directly over there in order not to give different orders for the DER services that make we, that will make a feasible uh, operative uh, situation for those uh, distributed energy resources. Then we need to establish coordination. We need to say who is going to act directly over DER, who is going to be in the hierarchical level immediately above DER, and how the other system operator, the one that cannot act directly, is going to be coordinated so that both can make use of the services and make and will have uh, the new tools that we were saying in the previous slide. Then, let's propose a methodology in order to solve this problem. We have proposed a methodology that do not assess how a model uh, is and behaves. This methodology assess how a model behaves within a country, how a model fits in a country. This methodology is based in three different phases. The first one, and boundary conditions identification correspond to the current situation frame of this timeline. This first phase will analyze how this situ how is the situation in the country today. Later on, the second phase will analyze the transitional time that <coughs> will be from now up to the moment when the model will be running for the long run. And finally, the long the new model running the last phase, the assessment of the decision variables, will be assessing how the model behaves in this country for the long run and for the whole system. But let's see step by step this methodology. First one, the boundary conditions identification have to analyze how is how are the DSOs today in this in this country, uh, which are the market power that DSO have, which are the DSO voltages that they have in, in the country that they are owning which are DER penetration, which is the D, D, DER penetration, if there are services or not that can be considered, and how is the coordination nowadays in that country, the operations and the coordination with the other system operator. Once we have analyzed the current situation of the country, we can see how will be the transitional time from now up to the moment when the model is uh, running for the, for the long term. The transitional time will have to assess three different steps. We'll have to assess three different approaches. The first one, technical changes. For example, if it's needed a new channel in order to make more communication among the different agents of the grid, or also if new systems will be needed in order to accomplish with to cope with all the new information that those services will be providing. In, a, in the second step, regulatory changes, it will be needed to assess two uh, situations, the regulatory changes. First of all, in a local situation, if uh, changes in rights and obligations for the country of the agents will be needed. In a European situation, we have to assess if uh, regulatory changes will be needed. For example, uh, in case DSO will be uh, running a, an operational market it will be needed to change a European regulation. Finally, the third step, an economical assessment, has to assess both 
technical changes and regulatory changes into an economical terms. But I will tell you that in the master thesis that I have given you, we have done the, the analysis in a qualitative way, not in a quantitative way for this case. Finally, third phase uh, of this methodology, the long-term assessment, we'll have to analyze how all these changes will be high in the, in the long run. For this reason, we will need to make balance with the transitional changes that we have previously seen, the services that we'll be offering, the distributed energy resources, and the country DSO profiles, if they are, which are the voltages that they are owning and the uh, market power that they are having. So let's apply this methodology into a case study. We have said that this methodology assess how a model fits in a country. Let's see first the different models that we have considered. In this case, uh, we have choose uh, these three models that are coming from the review of the state of arts that we have done in this master thesis. But here we have deeply defined them uh, in, the, in the master thesis. The first one, the centralized and extended dispatching, is a model that is an extension of what we have traditionally seen in Europe. The TSO is running a, a market and is the agent who can act directly over TER. Uh, on the other side, we have cumulative, DSO cumulative services. It's a model where both DSO and DSO will be running operational markets. In this case, DSO will be acting directly over DER and DSO, in this case, can uh, provide services, is incentivized to provide services to the TSO as a virtual power plant. For the last case, coordination at the primary station is very, very similar to the previous one, to the TSO cumulative services. However, in this case, for the coordination at the primary station, TSO is not incentivized to offer services to the TSO. We have deeply defined, as I previously said, and we have deeply analyze those uh, models with this sample grid that are, is, coming, is coming from an IIT uh, document. Uh, this sample grid, we have add new generation and new loads in order to make it more complicated. And we have analyzed how these models behave when there are DSO necessities and DSO necessities such as new, connection, new congestions, uh, losses, voltages, frequency problems, how these models takes into account the operations and the uh, information flows. So, once we have the models, let's go for the countries. Euroelectric, the European Association, have provided us from some raw data from a survey. Uh, with this data, data, we have uh, analyzed 12 European countries, and we have grouped them into three different blocks. The first one, the, uh, I've considered the countries where DSOs can act DLD in most of the cases over DER, and in most of the cases, DSOs are incentivized to consider uh, those services from DER. The second group are the countries where, depending on the situation, if it's a normal, constraints, or emergency scenario, the DSOs will be able to act or not. Finally, the, the third group considered the countries where um, the DSOs cannot act in most, in most of the situations over DER, and if they can act, it should be done uh, over the TSO. In the third group, most of the cases, the DSOs are not incentivized to consider those services. Once we have cropped them, analyzed, cropped them, we have considered Finland, Austria, and Spain as a representative countries for each of the groups. When with these three groups and the three countries, uh, we have done the case study, and we have applied the methodology into a practical case for each of the couples country model. For this reason, since we have three couples and three models, uh, three, three countries and three models, we have applied nine times the case study. And I can tell you that the situation, the results change a lot depending on the country situation and the model that is applied. However, we can do a general review over the different, over the different models. The, previous, the first one, centralized and standard dispatching, I told you is the model where is a, which is an extension of a traditional one. 
is a model that fits better for countries where there is not a lot of TR resources, TR services. The other two models, DSO cumulative services and coordination at the primary substation, are models that fit better in countries where there are a lot of DR services. The difference among them is that if the country has uh, uh, some DSOs with a lot of market power, a lot of market power, it's better to go for a coordination at a primary substation model. Then, finally, at conclusions, we have seen today that the roles will not change for future. The difference for future will be the different tools that both DSO and DSO will have depending on the model that is applied. For this reason, we need to establish a coordination to say who is going to act over TER and how the other system operator will be acting through a coordination. For this reason, we need more different models. We have proposed here three different models and we have analyzed them along Europe. But we have said that there is no one size that fits all. There is no one country that fits better for all the, the countries in, in Europe. Let's go for the future steps after these uh, conclusions. I told you that we have done here a, a qualitative uh, analysis, but we can do a CVA analysis in order to achieve a quantitative result. Maybe not all users of the system are able to provide services, maybe just the ones of uh, medium or high voltage are enough for the system operators. For this reason, we have to assess, we have to address if uh, all, this, all the users will be providing services or, or not. New models, a combination of, of them. We have proposed here three different models, but maybe a combination among them for different situations will be better, or maybe a new, a completely new model will be better, maybe better than those that we have proposed here. Future research should be done in this aspect. And we have said that there is no one model that fits better in the whole euro. For this reason, we have to address how does it fit this situation while we are trying to achieve a European target model, a single market for the whole Europe. We have to address uh, how this will how this will make a difference in the coordination among the different countries. Blackout the scenario should be considered because we have considered here frequency, voltage, but no blackout, and maybe one of the models fits better for a blackout the scenario. Different possibilities for a mantling. We have said in this master thesis that the, that the mantling that we have today, if it is properly implemented and if the procedures are correctly audited, will be enough for a mantling. However, we can also transpose the regulation that TSOs have nowadays in Europe where they can choose among to be an ISO, ITO, or Omnesty and Bundling. We can transpose this regulation for the DSOs. Regulation incentives should be uh, taken into account in order to encourage the DSOs to consider DR services. And pilot projects should be also done in order to see how those, uh, how these models fit in reality. Finally, as a last step of this uh, presentation, of this master thesis, we have to consider the dissemination of this master thesis. I told you that Euroletti have provided us from some data and also some European associations and European DSOs have uh, asked us about this uh, master thesis result. For this reason, we have to disseminate the results as a, finally, as a final step. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Finally, I will be glad to answer any questions from your side. Okay, thank you very much for your clear presentation.